it's the fun guy guy, the fun guy guy. He finds the fun guy, we find out why he's the fun guy guy, the fun guy guy to find out about fun guy. Then you could do us then give this guy a try. He's the fun guy guy. Like a wheelie bit, but without the wheels on. Oh, you who? Ali McKernan, the fun guy guy here. Join me today for UK Fungus Day. We're going for a walk in a local country park. Don't know if we're going to find anything, uh, but I've brought some helpers today, uh, including this young lady, who very optimistically has made a list all the way up to 40. So that's our back to me. That's our goal for today, 40 species. Go on, let's see what we can find. Ooh. Okay, good news, bad news. Bad news is, there's mowers. And they might get to some of the fungi before we do. Ooh, I'm on my edge now, are you? And the good news is, we found our first fungus. It's this little, I've got to say, Ganoderma. It will make a mark. Yes, it bruises when you touch it. All right, we're off. Come and have a look at this. It's nothing special, but it's worth a mention. These are deceivers, okay, Lacaria. And they're called deceivers for a very good reason. They deceive, they're very deceptive. Even now, I had to turn them upside down to have a look at the gills. Always a very important part when you're trying to identify a fungus. You'll often need to see underside, stem also. But because these were a bit, come here, come here. These are a bit dried out, so they've lost some of their natural colour, which would usually be like a tan orange. These have gone a bit buff, could have been one of a few things, but as soon as I unpick one there and have a little look, that widely spaced gills and that pink in colour tells me we're in deceiver territory. But they can be bigger than this, they can be twirlier, they can be fatter in the stipe, in the stem. The deceiver. Not today, boy. Okay, nice little patch here. It's a little bit dry conditions today, but things have been fruiting of, of late. So we've got something to look at. That's the most important thing here. Um, our first of this genus. This, I can tell by its smooth, chunky kind of stature there, we're gonna be in the Belit family. Now there's no way of me knowing for identification because we're trying to make this a learning educational video. I'm gonna, you know, we wanna learn a little something. I wouldn't always pick mushrooms. Sometimes you need to for identification. If you go to only pick one. And if you're not sure what you're doing, maybe leave it alone, take as many pictures as you can to, and then get help from others. But for this case, we'll have a little look. So I'm gonna take it from as low down as I can. The stem, there we go. Ooh, this is pretty. All right, okay. So this is one of the smaller, thinner stemmed beliefs. It's a little bit different to some others because the pores, first of all, it has a sponge underneath as opposed to gills that I showed you a moment ago on the deceiver. This has lots of holes, a bit like if you bunched a load of straws together. So they're like tubes. For lots of beliefs, I'd have to cut through the middle and have a look at the way that it bruises or changes color. Nice little find. Right here though, we can carry on. There's something shiny here. Hey, okay, I wasn't sure what this is. I've not had a good look, but now I have. Beautiful shiny cap, wavy, slightly domed. Underneath is the clue here. We've got a, a pinkish salmon tinge to this. This is one of the pink gills. This is an entoloma. I'd take a punt, I'm having a guess here. Wood pink gill, I'm having a guess. There we go, that's a nice one. And just over here, keep the camera rolling. This is exciting, where did we see something? Something close to here, I'm sure of it. Where was it? We saw something, there they are. Look how hard it is to get your eye on sometimes. Little wrinkled clubs, which is a lovely little thing. They come up often in troops, solitary growing. But I've, Oh, and right next to us, this right. Oh my word, well, I've never seen someone so small. That's fantastic. I don't know if you can get this on camera. That is a, the smallest ever elfin saddle. Uh, oh, wow, how beautiful is that? Uh, Lachinosa, Helvella Lachinosa. Fantastic. What a lovely little set of finds they are. Cool. Looks like a little hand. Give it a high five. Okay, I've not moved yet another meter this way, so it's, this is all in the same space. Worth mentioning now is why I've come to this little space, because it's covered in oak. And oak is one of our main trees, mycorrhizal, our friendship trees. Lots of fungi that we're seeing here wouldn't be here unless they were growing with these trees. They look after each other on the ground, okay. Here's another species, and this is the fibre cap. This is the best example, if you can get this one, Mr. Cameraman. Can you get that on there, those features here? This is a fibre cap, lovely. And you see, it's like little fibres, like little strips of cotton almost, fibrous cap to it. And that little umbo, sometimes a bit like a nipple, 
that's classic stuff for this being a fiber cap now i'm not going to look underneath to see what it is i just know that that's what that is uh, this is the inosibis and they're often a very poisonous species whoops so there we go, another one for our list. And they're actually growing a little ring all around the base of this birch tree. Come back to me. Birch is another big one. And right there is that spruce. One of the conifers. Three of our big main trees all in this little space, which is why we're finding fungi. Great news. Looks like I've already lost my helpers because they're rolling down the hill. There they are. Under this birch tree, we've got another new genus, new species for us to look at. And this is the Rushula, common name the brittle gill. And I'll explain and I'll demonstrate that now for learning purposes. This is a very brittle, oh, can you see in itself a brittle mushroom? Very chalky, crumbly stem because they're made up of different ways than most other fungi. And the key part here is that when I break these gills, they break away very easily. A little bit like flaked almonds. Okay, and that is brittle gills, so it's known as the brittle gill family. This is growing under birch, so probably the birch brittle gill, but there's lots, they're quite hard to identify in the field and I'm not very good at them. Here's a little clue for you, you don't always have to look up to know what your tree is, and I've talked about the importance of trees, I know that these are birch leaves, so I didn't have to look up, I knew it was there. Know your leaves, know your trees, know your mushrooms. Join me now, about three metres further along, we're having a lovely time here, it's a rocking patch. Uh, for this, we found in this embankment, woohoo, a different type of fungus again, which is fabulous, a real good species count. This is in the cup family. And now then, the way that this gets rid of its spores is different. Back to me. A normal mushroom would drop all its spores out of its gills or tubes, like that belly earlier. They drop out into the wind and away. This guy is a spore shooter. And there on the inside surface, it, in fact, let's try it. If I blow, it might just go poof, watch. Hello? Nothing. Just like live TV should be. Come back a bit. Probably a bit scary my face at that close up. I'm going to have a guess. I don't know my cups very well. Could be the Paziza. One of the Paziza family. Stay there. Don't go anywhere. Actually do. Go back a tiny bit. And then look at these guys here. Tiny, tiny little mushrooms. That are back to the very first one we found. Which are the Deceivers. Now when they're this small... I think it's a different one of the deceivers. There's just a small handful. By the time I've made this, completed this video, hopefully at this point now, look at me, there'll be a name of what deceiver I think that is coming up on the screen now. Maybe. So now we found another grisette. Much easier to show you the key features of this type of Amanita. So come and have a look. Here it is, standing proud, beautiful thing. This cap, this is your main thing, so if you can see that cameraman, the edge here, which is what we call the margin, has got all these grooves on it, they're called striations. So we've got a striated cap margin, and the main one, lots of amanitas, have a floppy ring that sits halfway on the stem. This is smooth and ringless. Now it could fool us and we think, hang on, it's growing out of the ground. There will be an egg sac under here. And I think this is going to be the tawny grisette, perhaps... And sometimes you need to look at the colour of the, the egg sac. Can't quite see, but because this is just a bit of a darker shade into it. Oh, I don't know. I'm not going to put my neck on the line. Nevertheless, it's a beautiful grisette. Okay, we're leaving that little patch. I could stay there all day. Kids are getting bored. So we'll go to a big woodland over there that's conifer, gives us different kinds of fungi. However, on the fields across, Neistable one spotted this, and I got very excited. Now, for any mycologists out there, I'll tell you what that is. Come on, what is it? Don't really dig. What is that? I am so proud. Look at the top here, the, the conch of it. Get on the head top there. Yes. That's the giveaway for me. Remarkably, come back to me. I'm so proud because son number one, who's only 12, knew exactly what this was and it, what you'd expect it to be. This appears to be growing out of the ground. But it, and it is, but under there must be some brood one of some kind. Oh, it'd be this old wood chip. It might be this old wood chip here. There's some wood chips on the top. Some remnants of. Essentially, this is a wood chip, a wood rotter. This is the deal shield, which is absolutely fantastic. It has a striated, like, fibrous, uh, dark fibres on the pale stem and this beautiful, shiny, conker-like uh, bonds cap on it. Underneath, the gills will start out white and begin to turn pink. 
a beautiful specimen. What a wonder that one is. If I was really cool, I'd be able to pull off the Latin name. I'm not really cool. I wonder if I could be slightly cool. Oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. Uh, nope, can't get it. Right, I've not moved. I've just remembered it. Plutius Savinus. Thank you. <laughs> okay, another new one for us. Another new genus. These are the ink caps. This is a cracker. Look at the stature. Look at the way that guy stands. So this is the shaggy ink cap. Sometimes also known as a lawyer's wig. That's your parents. What, what's a lawyer's wig? Look it up on Google. Uh, and there it is. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. So what's perfect is we've got them at different stages of development. This is later on and it starts to turn black from the way up like that. And it's actually eating itself. It's called to auto digest. And this is actually, the posh word is deliquesque. And it's actually turns into an ink. And if you look here, there's the ink on my finger from the gills, which is amazing. And what happens is little insects, it'll drip down into the grass and insects will step in it and they'll pass and move those spores around so that this can spread far and wide and hopefully grow in other places. Back to me. Interestingly, with this one, that ink can actually be used as ink. And in the old days, the monks used to write their scriptures using ink from these ink caps. You at home, if you find one, collect it, put it in a jar and watch overnight. In 24 hours, one day, you'll have a little pot of gooey ink. It stinks, but you can draw with it. Something new that I don't find very <laughs> something new that I don't find very often now is a rust gill, and that's because they grow on conifer wood. And I don't live near many conifer places, but I'm in one now. And here it is, a beautiful bright orange thing. And the rust actually might be these rust spots here. Look, I don't even know that much, but it's beautiful, and it's a recycler. And look, it's recycling. Oh, this dead twig here. There we are. If I lift it up, you can see it, and it'll have beautiful orange gills. And it's recycling, it's turning that back into soil for us. Nature's recyclers. These guys are dudes. All right, another species of brittle gill, the rushula, often very white underneath, sometimes cream, but nearly always a white mushroom. But this one is a different one again, and this is the powdery brittle gill, because it often has a little white bloom on top, and it's this beautiful bluey gray color. All right, Fungi can be lots of things. Today we're looking for fungi in the woods which are often going to be mushrooms. We've seen a lot of that already. But well, there'll be different shapes like brackets and clubs. There'll be all sorts. Sometimes the ones you will know about maybe in your house is a mould. Like maybe on a, a piece of old bread that someone forgot to throw out and it has little green spots on. Or a tangerine that's gone a bit green and fluffy. Well here we've got another mould. This one is a fungus on a fungus. This is what's probably called a hypomyces, which is the bolete eater. It's a mold that loves eating bolete. So under there is a big old mushroom. Fungi on fungi. Great find now. We've got a whole cluster, a clutch of stinkhorn eggs. Now inside here is all the energy and basically a baby stinkhorn. And it will burst through this sack when the time is right into this incredible, fast growing, 24 hours, huge mushroom, which I happen to have in my hand. We found one. Uh, I've got to smell then. It, it smells of poo and rotting flesh. And when we found it, it was covered in flies. It, it was covered in this green stuff called gleba, this green glue, uh, goo at first. But look, the flies have eaten nearly all of it away. And that's all that's left. I reckon if I come back in two hours, that'll all be gone. They love it, the flies. But what happens is the flies land on it. And while they're munching away, it all sticks to the feet. And their spores, their seeds are in this gleba, this goo. Sticks to the flies' feet, they fly off. And that's how this mushroom spreads its spores. They've all got special secret ways. Isn't that brilliant? The stinkhorn, people are repulsed by the smell. It's one of the only mushrooms in the world you can smell before you find it. Isn't that amazing? I actually find it quite sweet and gassy. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, another new genus which is very exciting. It's only a dinker, but I'm going to film it because hopefully it'll show us what we need. Which is that when I break the gills on this, there you go, it gives us milk. Because this is a milk cap. There we go, Lactarius. Fantastic little milk cap there. Wonderful. Oh, look at it. Do not drink it though, it's not like real milk. So we've got lots here of these little buttons ready to come out of the ground. Isn't that amazing? And they are so textured and cracked that I think, I was going to say the blusher, but because there's no pinking at all, we can see 
they go right out there because there's no pinking in them at all i think these might grow up to be those beautiful big red amanitas called the fly agaric i think they're gonna be those very nice i've just had a call that there's some blushers let's see if these kids know what they're talking about we've not met one yet so this is retained knowledge from a years gone by let's see if they're right blushers where are they yeah. let's have a look hey well done and they're right so this is back in the Amanita family I've talked about that often have a ring and it'll be under there. There's the ring. There's the remnants of the universal veil when it breaks through and leaves little scales on the cap. And that beautiful pinking you can see is the blush part, a bit like when we get embarrassed and we blush. Well, that's where this one gets its name. The blusher. Fantastic. Oh, I'm growing on an old beech tree. Oh, look at those. Fantastic. Bracket fungi. What you are likely to find, and I'm not brilliant at these, but I've been trying a bit harder, but this should be easy for me, is this is an earth ball. We've covered it already. I mentioned that little baby scaly one. This is scaly, but you can feel the scales. And if you look, it's got that yellowish tinge to it, which means citrina. So this is the common earth ball, okay? And citrina being one of the Latin name for it. What's interesting is I'll take one, and if you come away, cameraman, and I cut, uh, cut it in half, It'll have, there we are, a very thick skin, which could be a difference for some of them. And all these bits here, in another few weeks, these would turn to dust and it would all look like dust and it would be all the spores. So this one releases its spores when it gets old by popping a hole at the top and they all burst out and float off in the wind. So there we are. Son number two has just brought me this he found on the floor. And I like this moment because there's lots of fun guys that stump me, don't get me wrong, but this one's got to be properly stumped. I think it's just, it's got this felty surface to it, a little bit fibrillose, a little bit like cotton fibres, like little streams. And it's got a cream underside, striated, buff, but what's interesting, I think this is going to clinch it for me. I think this might be one of the knights, spelt with a K, like a knight with shining armour. A trichloma. Interesting is it's got a dark edge to the gills. So when I get home, I'll try and do a close-up of these edges. And I think that might help me reveal what this is. I could be completely wrong, but I reckon that dark edge to the gill is at least going to be an identifying clue. Ooh. All right, three for the price of one here. We're going to do a little tour. This one. Ooh, what's this you're saying? I don't know if we've met this yet. Well, we have. It looks totally different. It's red, but there's those widely spaced pink gills. It's the Deceiver. Now then, it starts half decent. We're coming up here to this beautiful specimen of the tawny grisette. Look at that. There's those striations I talked about and tawny grisette because of the brown cap, but also there's some browning in that little egg sac that it comes through. And the finale to finish. Hello, you. This is something called Porcini, or Sep, or King Belit, or Penny Bun. It has more names than any other mushroom because it's one of the most famous. This is our uh, Belitus edulis. This is, like I say, the King Belit, and it's a gorgeous Belit mushroom. There you go. Just to show there isn't too much bias in one direction, a quick shout out for the Rizupinates. The crust fungi, they do a cracking job of breaking down the lignin and cellulose in these old trees here. Turning them back into soil. Soil magicians! Okay, I think we're coming towards the end here. We've nearly hit our 40 species, which is very good. And we might finish with one of these guys. This is the Scarlatina Belit. Now the holes are so small on this because it's still young that they're very, very tiny, the pores. Okay, like pores in our skin. All right, but these actually stain. So if I, in fact, I could probably bruise it just by touching it and that'll start to turn black, that area. You see it's turning darker. Let's make it more fun than that though. Let's up the ante. And if I slice this in half, are you ready? Here we go. Watch it turn blue. From yellow to blue within seconds. Fantastic. That's it, we're calling that a wrap. That's the end. What a lovely little day. I hope you enjoyed it, and even half as much as I did. Then that sounds quite reasonable to me as a percentage. Listen, great day, found loads of fun guy. And most importantly, did we manage to conquer the 40 species? Yes, we did. 42 even. I reckon there's quite a lot more on there that crusts and rust that I don't know about. Fantastic, fantastic UK Fungus Day. Hope you get out there. 
Oh, a little message I'm planning for this. Hope you get out there. Go and look for fungi. Be careful. Be kind. Enjoy fungi. What's the message? Quest on the radio for fungi. Come on, fungi. <laughs> 